Good evening, I'm Madison Carmouche. Some people in Jackson have complained about the smell coming from the sewer. WYMT's RJ Johnson spoke with some folks that live in the area about their experience. Some folks living on Main Street in Jackson have complained about the smell. Danny Campbell says it started back in May when they installed a new sewer system, replacing an older one. They, 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 they put this new system in about six months ago, and uh, it, it ran pretty good. It, it seemed to be doing pretty good until this lift station stopped a couple weeks ago. Deborah Miller also lives on Main Street, and she says the smell comes into her house through her bathroom, describing it as unbearable. It was worse down on Lower Main and up more toward uh, town where uh, Danny Campbell lives. It started coming up in her house. Um, the odor was just unreal. I mean, it's just been unreal. Mary Watkins lives nearby and says the smell of it in her house will not go away. It basically stays in my house at some point, especially the back section of my house where the sewer goes out. Miller says officials have tried to help get rid of the smell. However, nothing has worked. They put a filter on our house. Uh, they have put charcoal uh, stuff in the in the manholes, everything. And there for a while, for about two weeks or something, we didn't have any sewer gas smell. And about a month ago, three weeks ago, it came back stronger than ever. She says Mayor Laura Thomas has done what they can to help the problem. However, they want something done quickly. So we just want it fixed. That's all we want. And it's not they're not trying. It's just that what they're trying is not working. So I feel like that we need to go somewhere else. We need to maybe find some other company or something that might could help us. Miller says she's not stopping until the problem is fixed. In Jackson, RJ Johnson, WIMT Mountain News. Miller also says she is worried for her and her neighbor's health because at times it can be hard to breathe. The mayor of Jackson, Laura Thomas, sent WIMT a statement. To read the statement in full, you can find this story on our website. Firefighters are continuing to battle wildfires in the region. Friday's rain helped some. Earlier this week, there were nearly 20 active fires. Now there is only one active fire, according to the map by the Kentucky Division of Forestry. Crews from several states are helping with those fires. 34 counties are now under 24-hour burn bans. And as a reminder, burning is banned for all counties between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. through mid-December. We've seen dry weather across the mountains on this Sunday, but the forecast taking a turn towards the soggy side over the next couple of days. Let's take a look at what we're expecting for tonight. Just partly cloudy skies. It's going to be a chilly night across southern and eastern Kentucky. We're heading down into the 30s. In fact, let's take a look at what we can expect in your neighborhood. Starting out zone by zone in the Cumberland Valley, we'll call for an overnight low of 39 London and Corbin, 40 into Somerset, 37 Middlesbrough, 36 into Pineville, 34 Jackson, Hazard, Whitesburg, and over into the Big Sandy, right at the freezing mark, Paintsville and Inez. But those temperatures will come up right after midnight as a southerly breeze is going to kick in. In fact, by the time we wake up in the morning, we're likely going to be into the 40s and then we see 60s by the afternoon. One or two showers possible during the day on Monday. Not a ton of rain, but the forecast takes a turn to the soggy side on Tuesday. Also going to see some pretty gusty winds. And for now, Thanksgiving is looking dry, but afterwards, Things get a little interesting. We'll take a closer look at that extended forecast coming up here in just a few minutes, Madison. Shane, thank you. A man that was missing for nearly three years in Clay County was found dead. Robert Bob Estep, 69, was found by another hunter in a remote area under an ATV. Estep went missing on December 15, 2020. The Clay County coroner says that he was near Kentucky 149 across from Brenton, Britain Branch. This is where his family believed he was. Police say that no foul play is suspected. On Saturday, the Martin County School District made a post on Facebook about the death of a principal. Brian Charles was the current principal of Martin County High School and the former principal of Warfield Elementary School. The school district says that Charles was a devoted and lifelong educator who will be missed by the community. 
Funeral arrangements have not been announced at this time. First responders in Wayne County responded to a car crash in Monticello. The two car crash happened on Kentucky 90 bypass in front of the Ace Hardware in Monticello. Monticello police and fire departments arrived as well as Wayne County Sheriff's Office and EMS. One of the drivers was Sheila Vanover, 57 of Monticello, and she and her six-year-old passenger were flown to Lake Cumberland Regional Hospital and then to UK Medical Center. The driver of the other car, Robert Hockenberry, 53 of Monticello, was un uninjured, but his passenger, Amanda Burchett, 47 of Monticello, was taken to Wayne County Hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. After 72 years, a World War II veteran has finally made it home. U.S. Army Private First Class Henry C. Wade died in Germany at the age of 24 during the war, but his body was only accounted for in May of this year. The family of Wade made sure to never give up on getting his body home to the States, even through generations. Wade's nephew made the effort to get his body home. My mother, Henry's sister, uh, asked me to see what I could find out, what the Army knew about Henry. And I just started making inquiries and uh, sort of feeding the fire, I guess you'd say. Private First Class Wade will be buried in Russell Springs on November 29th. Former First Lady Rosalind Carter died earlier today at her home in the Plains, Georgia. Carter was known for her passion for mental health, caregiving, and women's rights. She was married to President Jimmy Carter for 77 years. Current First Lady Jill Biden mentioned Carter's death at a Thanksgiving event her and President Biden attended today. That I have to lead this off with a, a sad announcement. Um, our former First Lady Rosalind Carter has just passed. Um, and. She was well known for her efforts on mental health and caregiving and women's rights. So I hope that uh, during the holidays, uh, you'll consider saying you include the Carter family in your prayers. Funeral arrangements have not been released at this time, but can be found at rosalindcartertribute.org when they become available. Boston Children's Hospital reported worldwide roughly 14,000 children are known to have Batten disease. In Harlan County, one seven-year-old girl has a rare type of Batten disease that at the time of her diagnosis had less than 35 cases. WYMT's Jack Dimmler spoke to the Halcom family about the disease and how one organization was able to bring her joy. In 2020, the Halcom family noticed concerns with their daughter, Emmeline. Nobody really knew what was wrong with her, so someone had suggested to take her through the ER at Cincinnati Children. That's where she was diagnosed with CLN-14 Batten disease. There is no cure or treatment for Batten's, but they can treat her symptoms um, to kind of just make life easier on her. Um, so it is a, it is a struggle especially not having anyone local that knows how to treat her. But with the help of Make-A-Wish, Emmeline was able to find joy in a difficult time. To see how happy she was down there and how healthy she was. She didn't have any jerks, any tremors. Um, she ran all over the park. Yeah. So she had the best week literally the best sleep that we could have asked for. Not only getting to meet Disney princesses, but getting a trip to Disney's Give Kids the World Park. Down there, she was just another normal kid. And I love it because they're an awesome foundation and she literally got to just be a regular kid. Like everybody had to work around her. Thanks to an organization that gave her an experience unlike any other. It's and probably one of the best organizations that they could have to help kids enjoy what they have. While continuing the fight. Emlyn's end should have happened a long time ago, but she has came over so much. But, sorry. But she, um, I couldn't do it. 
as an adult, I could not do half of the stuff that she's been through or that she's had to go through all the, you know, medical procedures and everything. I couldn't have done it, but she does it. And sharing valuable lessons along the way. She's just, she's really showed us like how to look at the world differently and how to look at life differently. In Cumberland, Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. Coming up at 11, as the holiday season gets closer, we take a look at what travel this upcoming week will look like for many Americans.